Hello, everybody. My name is Hypothesis OW. I'm your play by play uh, caster today, and I'm joined by Spaffles. Yo, what is up, gamers and gamers? Uh, my name is Zach, aka Spaffles. I don't know which one you're going to choose, so we're going to roll with both. Uh, it's looking like a stack series today, and I'm looking forward to getting into it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so this is Team Cool Cats versus Team Owen 6. Uh, both teams kind of struggling right now in the dog division, uh, partic particularly Team Owen 6 not seeming too uh, confident with their name. But uh, I still think that this will be a competitive match. Uh, if we want to go take a look at our teams real quick, we have Team Cool Cats. Spaffles, what do you have to say about them? Yeah, so Team Cool Cats is coming out fast, coming out strong. They're definitely looking powerful and imposing with the dive setup that they've got going, where they're they're posing up with the massive Winton. You got Phantoms on the Winton, you know, uh, X sub for Team Hong Kong, very imposing player. And on the DPS side, you've got Samarush and Silasau both playing the Genji and the Echo respectively. And in the back line, you've got a really solid lineup as well with Caprixel and Drac. Caprixel running the Ana and Drac running the Lucio as well. Now, these are yeah. all some of their like favorite, you know, their their favorite heroes. They play them a lot. And knowing them, they're probably going to look very, very intimidating. Uh, and they're going to be very imposing with their strength. For sure, for sure. And now we're going to be taking a look at Team Owen 6 here. Uh, team Owen 6 going to be running it out with uh, Lafi, Leve. I don't know if it's maybe based off the singer, um, but actually Leve is a um, is actually Phantom's roommate. So we're going to be seeing a bit of a roommate diff going down uh, on the tank line. Uh, then we have on the back line, we have Ninjack and Guns. Uh, if I'm frank, I don't know very much about Ninjack, but I do know Guns from uh, UTOW uh, Pugs, and he's a very uh, confident player. He may be the lowest on this team, I believe, but that does not mean that he's bad. I've seen this guy make some crazy plays, and over on the DPS, uh, admittedly, not two people I'm not quite familiar with, but Kishi and 19 looking like they're preferably on the Genji Tracer, a bit of a throwback to some old comps, but um, I'd like to see what they can do. Yep, and just like you said, being the lowest player on the team just means you have the highest to spring up, right? You know, when people don't expect that much from you, that's when you can really start to pull out the surprises, and we've seen a lot of upsets, especially in tournaments so far, and I'd be really interested in seeing how Ninjak uh, pops off these games. Yeah, for sure, and uh, also, I was just wondering, what do you think they're going to be running in these? I mean, like you said, Cool Cats is probably going to be partial towards the dive comp. I do know Phantoms is quite a big Winston enjoyer, um, you know, We're between told. our conversations, <laughs> but I do know that he has uh, a pocket Junker Queen and a very good Reinhardt. He's pretty decently flexible. Yeah, I mean, it, there's a lot of different comps that can be played here, especially since... You know, we've seen that it's a flex support and a main support on both sides, which opens up a lot of different comps that you can play. You can play a lot more of effective brawl, a rush, you can even play something closer to poke as well. Uh, what I think we're really going to see here is just going to be comfort picks first, especially with like the dive on the side of Cool Cats and more of like a rush slash dive kind of comp from Team Owen. Um, and it just depends really on the maps. And Li Zhang is one of those where. You just, there's so many different play styles, just it's almost impossible to predict what exactly is going to happen. Exactly. Well, we're going to be going over to our first map, Control Li Jang Tower. Uh, well, I mean, looks like we're going to be seeing some rush here, of course, but we are going to be going to Gardens first, which is partial to Dive. So what do you think about that, Spaffles? Yep, Dive is definitely, like I said, it's going to be Cool Cat's strength and I'm expecting to see a lot of the, a lot of the Lucio, Ana, uh, Winton. They're going to try and rush through to and through the garden section of the map through the right side with the bridge, and they're going to try to look for a boot kills early, and then they're going to try and zone the enemy team off of the objective and make it their life a living hell as they all have to clump up to get over those bridges or to go through White Room as well. All right. 
right. Well, coming into this, it looks like Cool Cats are going to be starting out on their dive comp here with the Winston, Genji Tracer, Kiriko Lucio. A kind of classic look, taking the Genji instead of the Sombra. A few seasons ago, this was the meta, just with the Sombra instead to engage. But very different look from the side of um, Team 0 and 6 with the rush with the bastion this is really gonna screw it up for phantoms when he tries to dive because the bastion is just gonna take him out quickly they are gonna be swapping though to the sojourn on the side of owen six to get it on to the left side um Team 0 and 6 going to be taking some point. Transform coming out early here. Might be detrimental. Phantoms engaging with the bubble. Not going to be able to get any picks there. Good sustain from Team 0 and 6. And they're going to wait a little bit longer. But Leafy a little pushed up here. Going to be dropping low. Going to have to back up for the heals from guns. And this fight is going on forever. And it's going to flip to Team Cool Cats. Yeah, Team Cool Cat's just absolutely masterful zoning here, and they're also forcing out a lot of defensive cooldowns, but 1984 secures a kill onto Samurai's and Phantoms drops as well. Wow, and just people dropping left and right on the side of Team Cool Cat's, but Celisco is going to be taking uh, guns out. Still, not going to be enough. Quick pulse bomb there, though, from Celico. What can Team Cool Cat's do to break through this defense? Yeah, this is, especially after the first set of deaths, this is really when we're going to see a lot of counter picks come out, if they're going to make any changes at all, but they might have to commit. Yep, you can see the Doomfist coming out. He's a lot more adept at dealing with a lot of the CC, especially the Bastion as well, where he's a lot less committal. He has more mobility, and he's able to get in and out of the team fights a lot more effectively and try to bait out those turret forms. Yeah, for sure, exactly. And we're going to see Phantom going in with a big slam and punch right away, but Drak's going to get picked off by Laufey! And the beat comes out from Ninjak, and it looks like it's just cleaning up for Team 0-6. Not how we expected for this to come out uh, at first. Yep, exactly. A massive two opening kills, and even though Phantoms is able to trade later on, it's just not enough. And for two support ults to, tr to win that much percent on the, on the point, that's insane. That's a massive trade, and you take that every single time. Especially since you can still see that Cool Cats is still struggling to build up the ults themselves. Yeah, but you can't underestimate that Kitsune here. The Kitsune is going to be big for making space and they're going to be engaging right away now. <sighs> Nothing really being found though. Team Cool Cats not being able to secure any kills. The Doom Ult's going to come out from Phantoms. He's going to get he's going to get guns off the map and it looks like a team fight for Cool Cats, but really they used two ults there and, <laughs> and Team 06 did nothing. Yeah, and just back at it again. It's like the same thing we just said. They only use two ultimates and committing even the Doom ults, that, that counts really as like half an ult in terms of ult economy because he earns it so fast and it doesn't get used every single fight. It's not a massive advantage, right? And the, the strength of having a Doomfist ult is to be able to escape when you need to. 19th um, ult's gonna come out here, but Phantom's going in during the rotation. The blade comes out from Sam Rouge, gets three. Four, and that's an easy team wipe with just one ult for the side of Team Cool Cats. Yeah, that is some classic Cats domination. As you see, even they're swapping over to the counter pick, they're swapping from Bash into the Sombra to try and address the Doomfist that's running over their team currently. Even the Genji as well. It's some new Sombra is actually a pretty good counter to both of them uh, in the current sandbox. Oh, but it looks, looks like Phantom screwed up his engagement and Drac goes in and gets picked off pretty early. Caprixel falling soon after. Kishi going to be popping the Sojourn all here and just cleaning house. Team Cool Cats kind of threw that fight out the window. Yep, that was a classic case of Team Cool Cats engaging a little too early and having their Lucio stuck in a bit of an awkward situation. A follow-up nade from Guns also just completely sealed his fate and made it so that he couldn't receive any healing from Caprixel, even with the Suzu available. is gonna take out Kishi here. What an awesome early pick. Drac is gonna fall too. But it's possible for it's possible for Team Cool Cats to make a play here. Phantom's gonna be going in, gonna use his alt. Looking for a pick, maybe on the Ana. The Ana Get slammed oh, on it, and she's beat? dead. The beat's loot! And a comes out from Drac as well. Gonna be taken very low here and taken down, but I don't think it's enough. I think, I think Tomb Cool Cats flips here. It's gonna be close point one here. Oh, but Kishi takes out Sam Rouge. And Caprisco falls to Ninjak. Kishi gonna fall? F Phantom takes out 19? This is back and forth, back and forth. 
It's back and forth, and it's two supports versus the Doomfist. Who's gonna win? And the ball is back early. <laughs> Well, big punch from Phantoms coming out here. Gonna be slamming on the point as well. Leafy on the ball. Not really able to get any value though, other than touching. EMP comes out from 19. Sam Rouge takes out Gun. Sam Rouge takes out 19. Sam Rouge off the Genji. Looking for one more. Gonna go up to Kishi. Coming back from the spawn, he cracked the fight wide open and it's just their responsibility to get the Lucio and the ball off the point. He pops the blade to stop the stall. Uh, was it a little too overkill? Maybe. Oh, but it looks like he's going to be getting a pick out here. Maybe by 19. Gun's getting forced in as well. This is a really big fumble for uh, for Team 09 or 06. And they're going to get picked and we're going to have some celebra <laughs> celebratory suicide. Yeah, just team for a little dive with the fishies as Team Cool Cats secures the first point on Li Zhang. That was an absolutely <laughs> on the edge of my seat round. That was a lot closer than I expected going in, and just the back and forth between the teams was a little incredible. <laughs> Not even close as Phantoms, his heart is beating incredibly fast. Uh, but it looks like Sam Rouge is really the, the, the uh, hero for Team Cool Cats here. It looked very dire at the end there. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, we just saw both of the teams, they, they were sticking to their strengths, they were playing what they knew, and, you know, it, it, it really takes a lot of determination, a lot of confidence in your own ability to be able to go, okay, this isn't working, what can we change, but we're also going to keep committed to that same very core comp. They stayed on the dive the entire round, and so did Team Owen on the brawl. Now, coming back, they're actually on the brawl into brawl, really, as no teams that are picking Junkrat. A little bit of an interesting change here. And Celestau is going to look for a nade. Nades here are very, very massive, as 120 damage can instantly delete any character from the game. Yeah, but it does look like the foundation of Team Cool Cat's comp is just way better. They're going to get a pick. Sam Rouge left and right getting elims. Oh my gosh, who is he? He uh, is him. He is him as Reinhardt gets his shield broken, but it looks like a team Cool Cats are going to get the Sam Rouge going to get picked. Sam Rouge going to get picked, but Leafy falls to Celico. Phantoms in here gets the Fire Strike swing combo onto Kishi. And it looks like they're going to be able to stabilize. Uh, team Cool Cats comp is just kind of better because they're running the Baptiste. There's so much more sustain into the Bastion and the, the Echo and the Sarber want to play these off angles. Exactly. All that AoE healing, especially coming from Baptiste, that's a lot stronger than Ana in this case. And with the Brineheart shield and the, all the extra utility that's able to dodge those anti nades, it's not as impactful as sometimes in other comps. Yeah, and it, and it looks like it looks like a bit of a stare off here. But Ninjak gets picked off by Sam Rouge. Sam Rouge getting some vital picks here. Ooh, but <laughs> Phantoms get slept out of his shatter, and he's one and anti. Lefei oh. gets the fire strike. Oh wow! And it's just a uh, roommate MTD going on here. Luffy showing him who the better Reinhardt is under this house. As he gets, he throws the entire book and more at Phantoms, barely clinging onto life, and he just gets anti nated. Sl uh, slept, shattered, everything. <laughs> yeah, but Lefe is going to have the shatter here now for his own. Uh, and Phantom is going to have the block, and he gets the block right away. Sam Rouge gets a pick. Sam is just in their back line. They, they aren't doing anything about it. You'd think they would. Sam gets three. He's absolutely on fire this round, and even the Lucio beat was not enough to save them as Overclock actually outlasts the beat. <laughs> And he's they able to find those for this fight. Too. Wow, and that's a big stagger onto Ninjak. That's no speed boost for the team of Owen 6. And now they're just going to be holding here. Phantoms is going to drop a little bit low, but they do have the Window Fire Strike combo. Probably going to lay it down here. Here it comes! Ooh, and no picks come from it. Going to have the Bastion spamming through it, though. Yep, that anti nade was almost dire straits for <laughs> Phantoms team gets the pick! And he gets the pick anyways. Oh, the Phoenix falls Jax falls. comes out. Oh, oh, it's just back and forth here. Oh, Luffy falls really low. He's going to get the nano. He's going to walk up. But Celico in the back line on the Bastion. He gets 19. Sam Rouge does get picked off. But Celico with two. <laughs> he actually finds another. And we see the Reinhardt facing off against the Baptiste on point. That was an actually really, really close fight. But it looks like they're going to be able to recap since they do have the Echo there to assist them with all the damage. Oh, oh, gets it. oh but he dismisses the entire Shatter. He does get the kill, but nothing else. Leifei going to be dropping very low here. Ooh, he's able to be finished off if the Ana doesn't hear him. Selko gets him, but Drac also falls to the Sombra. It's just back and forth. It's scrappy. 
the jack falling low. Gonna be yeah, stalling. Point does get flipped. But Team Cool Cats are back. They're gonna be taking this this space again. While while Lathy's still coming back, the copy coming out from Kishi. Gonna try and build a shatter. Does get counterpin. He's gonna get knocked right out of that. But Phantoms falling really low. Does get hacked. Kishi yeah, now they're on the finish. Finish. Kill us out with Split. a massive Split. pick. Kill Split. Kill Split. He's on the off angle. He's playing from the rooms. Look at that tracking. Sam is going to pop with good aim. Where have you seen that one before? <laughs> that I'm afraid might seal the deal on Li Zhang. That that is first map going to Team Cool Cats in the series. Wow, this is going to be a close one, I think. Let's see. Let's see who got the play of the game. Sam oh, Rouge, of it's Sam Rouge. I'm guessing this is the Li Zhang Tower first point when he breaks through the overtime. Oh, oh no, this is this is when they catch them oh. in the rotation. An awful, or not awful, sorry, an amazing call from the side of Team Cool Cats. Yeah, wow, that was one hell of a boy. Was that a 4K, a 5K? Just absolutely mopped the floor with them. Wow, yeah, and I mean, this is looking like a bit of a banger of a game. It was looking a little bit dangerous for Team Cool Cats in that first round, but maybe just a warm-up round, who knows? But I do think uh, that Team 0-6 know how to play into that dive comp. Of course, uh, Leifei, knowing Phantoms, is going, to, is going to know what he wants to play. They're having a bit of a um, main tank fight, but... Uh, I, I wonder what, what map they're going to take them to next. Yeah, so it's looking like we're going to King's Row, the classic, classic map. You, know, you might also know it as Scrim's Row, uh, where we're gonna, probably going to see the Reinhardt v. v Reinhardt again. Yeah, and I mean, well, if last round or last map is anything to go off of, I mean, <laughs> Phantoms did win, but... I'm not gonna lie, I didn't see a single Shatterland from his side. Not that I saw any from Leifei, but... Phantoms did hit a bit of a... a bit of a Ryan Jax and a bit of a complete miss when there were three people there. Yep, yeah, and while you do see Team Cool Cats pulling out ahead, I do think that Laufey on the side of Team Owen does have the better Reinhardt. It's just, can the team keep up with him and can they you know, keep him up and keep him supported while he is able to get the Reinhardt. We want to see that MTD. We want to see it shine in King's Row. We want to see it blaring off the rooftops. I want to scream MTD, MTD, MTD. <laughs> yeah, and that's for sure. And as we go into King's Row, we're going to see Team Cool Cats on the right. Oh, never mind. Custom game sent back to lobby. <laughs> Looks like the teams might not have been quite ready yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, a little bit scuffed, a little bit scuffed. We're figuring it out. Um, yeah, so it seems like some custom game setting was on a ride, but you know what? While we're in the intermission here, I want to hear more about your hog. Oh, my hog. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with, with the brand new rework and everything, it's really breathed some new life into the character and... You know, I playing honestly, with your hog before the stream was pretty interesting. It was a little aggressive. I wasn't ready sometimes, and you were pushing pretty aggressively. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. And, you know, it's it's a little difficult to keep up, especially. And if you blow your load too early, right. and if you use all, all right. your it's, abilities, it's a little well, hard to keep up. And then everybody's left a little dissatisfied. But I think that hog really has some potential in the new meta, especially with how he's able to edge his healing. And he's not blowing his load too fast, and he does not—he doesn't have to worry about overhealing. He's a lot more diverse in that case. What do you think? Well, I actually don't agree with you. I think that Hog is pretty bad right now. The easy thing to do is just throw an Ana in there. And of course, you could have a Kiriko, but then that's forcing one of your supports to play Kiriko just for the Hog. You're going to be spamming a lot of heals into Hog, while other characters are just a lot less selfish, a lot uh, like need a lot less resources and are a lot easier or a lot harder to just run into. And especially on a map like King's Row, uh, where you want to be playing into them, you want to be rushing in. Uh, you're just not going to be able to run the Hog without getting completely ran over, bulldozered, if you will. Yeah, I mean, Hog is definitely a more selfish tank where he has a lot of self-centered abilities, and he also is, like, requiring the team to play around him. But honestly, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing to have those characters that when you, like, you have to hyper-invest into to make them pop off and make them reach their full ability, but maybe Hog is a little too much on that side of, as of now. 
Yeah, well, I'm thinking that regardless, because of these players' um, hero pools, there's going to be a Reinhardt duel here, maybe even the Sigma, but I don't think either of them will do that. It's kind of a roommate, uh, roommate handshake. Yep, coming out on the Rhine. Still, Team Cat going to be happy. Team Cat, Cool Cat, sorry. Team Cat's our team. <laughs> team Cool Cat's. Uh, still has functionally the better comp with the BAP, the BAP sustain, the Bastion spam. 19 is going to be coming out on the Bastion this time around with the May, but I still, I'm still unsure if they're going to be able to play well with it. The DPS line for Team 0 and 6 is better. But I think the BAP is just too vital. I think that Ana is not going to be able to split her heals the same way the BAP would be able to. And that immortality field is insane. Yeah, I definitely think seeing, like, watching these matches play out and seeing how the team comps play, I think we're definitely starting to see a bit of an Achilles heel for Team Owen. You know, as it doesn't look like they're as comfortable, or maybe he can't even play the Baptiste, which, you know, really allows for an opportunity for Team Kogats to abuse, as even though they try to box off the Reinhardt, they can't really land any important utility onto him, as he manages to survive with the help of the BAP healing of the repositioning. Oh, Leif is gonna get picked off! <laughs> That, that early transform really did him in because now there's no pressure on the Phantoms. He just gets to walk up. There is a lot of people all around the place. Saliko going to pick off Kishi, who was just sitting in the back line. It seems like someone else is in the back lane of Cool Cats, though. It's Ninjak. <laughs> we'll see a Lucio 1v1. You'll see a Lucio 1v1 in the back line. It doesn't look like he's going to be able to make a difference in time for the first point, but maybe he's going to be able to stagger. He's <laughs> chasing him. He's getting out. Ninjak lives. Like Wait, maybe not. Just a little bit of a stroll, you know. Just, just, just walking around, holding each other's hands. Yeah, we're still, we're still seeing a Lucio one v one go on here. Oh, Ninjak dropping low, but so it's track. Oh, uh, but Ninjak is gonna get out to the rest of his team. And Caprixel coming up with the window here. Looking like we're gonna see a window fire strike in a few seconds, uh, just to open up this point here. Here comes, and the transform comes out as well. Window's gonna be there, but it's gone immediately. Another fire strike going through the window for Phantoms, not quite finding anything. Transform and Nano comes out onto 19. 19 gonna pick off Celico just barely. And it looks like this is gonna be a fight win for the side of Team 06, but 19 gets picked off. And the Phantom has the shatter here. Here it comes, he's looking for it. Oh, here it goes, he's delayed now! Phantom, 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 Phantom! He's delayed now, he's putting it down, he's putting it down! No! He's just holding it, you know what? That's good on him, he's not being greedy. Oh, what do you mean? Oh my god, Phantom! Oh my gosh! And they're staggering guns! Holy! What a performance no. from Phantoms! Did you see how low he dropped with the anti on him and everything? Capricio getting an amazing immort out. That's what I was asking for. He was actually 50 HP sitting in the immort. That means the immort landed after he took that much damage. He was so close. He was on the brink of death. He was able to get the shatter off while their guard was down trying to finish him off. Yeah, we give props to Caprixel there for keeping Phantoms alive as much as she did. But now. Now the side of Team 0 and 6 are going to have more ults. And Celico gonna get ulted on by the enemy Bastion. Gonna get oh, taken no. out. Immor is gone as well. B comes out for the side of Team 0 and 6. Phantom's gonna be Phantom's gonna take away the action now. Oh, wait, this is oh the Sam Rouge is gonna get picked off. Phantom's coming back, but there's no way you can stop this fight. <laughs> You know what? I don't even care. I don't even care that they lost that fight. That that pin off the map was absolutely perfect, and I would do that 10 out of 10 times. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, the fight's already lost. They got a pick, and now, but now Caprixel's going to be coming up on another window. They could just window fire strike in here if Phantoms lands it. They they don't have an Immor. Guns guns goofed with the Immor early. Yep, and especially with the Baptiste window, it's going to be really, really easy for Phantoms to build up his Shatter here. And he just lands one or two Fire Strikes, he's going to be able to get it. Oh, but Sam going to get a pick! Shatter going to come out, but nothing is... Nothing is grabbed! Free's going to come out to deny the window, though. He's going to pick off Caprixel, but Sam takes out Kishi! Oh, 19 taking out Phantoms as well, though. This is really back and forth. Sam is going to commit his ult in. Oh, Salico getting the picks on Genji, though. Just opens it all up. up. Way too close, but it does look like Team Cool Cats is gonna pull ahead here. Did you see that shatter? Luffy was trying to go for the shatter underneath the objective to try and catch him off guard on the window, but Phantom was just predicting it. He was holding his shield the entire time. <laughs>
some superstar gameplay coming out from the Hong Kong player himself, Phantoms. Gonna be having a shot at this fight. Let's see if he can get one through Leifei's shield. Been doing a lot better this map about that. <laughs> Now Sam is on the high ground, ground so you can touch the window and they actually do manage to shatter the map! Oh, but Selco gets taken out! Dre, a big bleed! But Sam on the high ground, uncontested, is gonna clean up the team. Yeah, it does look like the blade is gonna be a little limp and ineffective, but it doesn't matter as his team does pull through and they're going up to the final stretch. Three minutes and thirty seconds left on the clock. They they do have beats. That is that should be enough to close up the fight unless they start the fight early with a 4v5. Yeah, well, it does look like it does look like a close game here for them. But Drac does get the beat off. Selico picking off guns already, Kishi down to Phantoms. Phantoms getting two. I don't even know what happened there. They just all uh, fell over in the middle of the Bastion alt. Nineteen not able to get any so value. Fast. And that's going to be your first half done for Team Cool Cats. Full capping, three points in two minutes and fifty-seven seconds. Wow. <laughs> An amazing showing from Cool Cats. So much time on the board. And now you have to ask, can Team Owen 6 really make it back from that? That's a mental thing as well. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they got the pitch. They were making plays. They got, they found kills, but it was always just one or two players from Cool Cats that were making those hero plays. They were popping those ults down 1v3, down 2v3, and they were finding the picks that they needed to secure the win. And that's got to be tilting. Yeah, of course. And you did see in the middle of that last round, Guns did swap over to the Baptiste, recognizing that it is the better pick, but it might not be his comfort. It's going to be showing us a bit of Moira, probably a bit of a troll, just considering they're in the attacker spawn. But on the side of Cool Cats, we are seeing, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Running the Sam on, uh, running Sam on the May, actually. His signature hero, if you didn't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so... Actually, no, not his signature hero. Sorry, I was thinking about Justin. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, you baited me. Come on, man. You're the expert. And... <laughs> my fault. And you can't just fault. set me up like fa for failure like this. My so fault. now that we're seeing that, you know, Sam or Phantoms was absolutely able to dominate in the Ryan matchup, it looks like Team Owen are going to try and, you know, circumvent that with their own dive comp. Oh, no, never mind. They're switching back to the Reinhardt instead of They're Winston. They, the they want comp. the rematch. But they are playing the Moira. Moira. They are playing the Moira, which is even less sustained because of how fast the Moira is going to lose all of her healing. They just need to poke out uh, Team Owen 6 and get their healing out. And look how low they are. They're not getting healed. Phantoms is just walking in for free. Life he gets booped before he can go to the other side. 19 does get a pick on Selico though. Yeah, the trades do favor Team Owen as well here because the, they are closer to their spawn, which means their team is able to regroup yeah, faster. But 19 is taken out by Drac. Is just not paying attention in the new Sombra. That's one of the things she's really bad at. She can't escape as easily. You have to whip that camera around and toss your translocator behind you. It's a lot harder to like escape from those close range hacks. Yeah, for sure. And we're now taking a look here and look at the alt advantage on the side of uh, of Cool Cats. They already have a shatter coming out. And Caprixel already close to that window as well. Guns is going to make the switch over to the bat. No! Sam Brax is in a shatter! <laughs> the question marks out from Jirak. Ninjak does get picked off anyway by Selico. They didn't need it. They didn't need it. It was a cosmetic shatter, but you know what? Cosmetics are what makes this game. And they're just able to sweep through as well through the choke. It, it looks like Phantoms is a little scared of a shatter there, though. Was holding his shield. Looks like he's mistracking the ult. But they do use the window on the side of Team Owen. Now, Team Cat has the best spot right now for Window Fire Strike. I feel like I've never missed a Window Fire Strike on this point. <laughs> They're absolutely cruising here on this point. But Team Owen. They're, they're building their ults, they're, they're getting ready for the comeback. This is this is their revenge arc. They're, they're gonna come back from this. And the window's not even that great. No, the, the window's window a off little bit off far off back. Zone. It's yeah. a zoning ultimate, but it wasn't really able to gain much ground as 1984 is looking for that EMP angle. And Sam just throws in his blizzard. They acted first, and that's what you have to do in these rush in these rush comp styles. You have to act first, you have to play first. And when you do that, this is what happens. You don't get to set up. The enemy yep. team doesn't get to set up. But that does mean that Team Owen is going to be coming up now on almost four ults. 
Yeah, now that was a minor blunder on the side of uh, 1984, as it seems like he doesn't know that Sombra EMP can actually counter Blizzard, and that was able to save his tank. A beat engage, though, from the side of Team Cool Cats just completely going in from the hotel. I'm sure that Team Owen did not expect that. Uh, team uh, Kishi going to be dropping low in the back line, going to be getting picked off the Phantoms in the spawn, gets so shattered by Team Lathe and that, or by Team Owen. And Team Owen is going to be able to get in here now uh, against them with no Reinhardt. Chasing yeah, Drak down. Right the fresh air that they needed as they're trying to chase down the remaining members. They're trying to chase down Drak and get him out of here. Ooh. 1984 gets countered by the, uh, by the Bashnolds. And Celico Bash on the fence oh, here. The Celico on the fence here too. Oh, the misery indeed. <laughs> Call now. Team Owen's oh, the beat comes out, but the shatter immediately comes out as well. The Phantom's just showing his dominance against his roommate. I I know for a fact that Leifei's gonna be coming over to his computer and shutting that thing off right after this match. 30 seconds remaining for Team Owen 6 to come touch the point. They are gonna have the blade and the window, but so do Team but Cool Cat also do have the window. Yeah, Team Cool Cat setting up close. They're gonna speed it on the back line, but they do find Luffy because he must relate to rotate. It, this window is gonna be lethal. The window comes out. <laughs> They're unable to move. Blade does come out onto the bash and Selco gets picked up with Phantoms with the Fire Strike. Guns gonna take out Caprixel and a bit of a baptism. But what do they do? It's, it's two supports in the tank versus the remnants of Team there's, uh, there's nothing to do. Oh, ball does touch on the side of Team Owen. You know, a little bit of a music show, actually. They're playing Perfect Night now as the, the ball comes into <laughs> threat in the point. But Leifei gonna get frozen up, Kishi as well, and even Ninjak. I mean, <laughs> what do you do? You know, just a little bit of classic BM there as Team Cool Cat secures point two and you know, goes up 2-0 versus Team Owen. Really yeah. Really your name. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's, uh, that's not toxic. <laughs> let's not be disrespectful to them. Phantoms is going to be getting the play here. I think we all know what it is. But in there, gets the lucky pin. <laughs> the shatter has 29 HP, 29 HP in, <laughs> in the immortality field. And... That that's gonna be King's Row. I mean, what do you do if you're if you're Team Owen here? Yeah, well, definitely going back to the drawing board after that map. We're going to be facing. I think Flashpoint is our next map. Now that will you know really favor your stereotypical rush setups. But I wonder if they're going to try and mix it up with a little bit of brawl, like we saw, the, or a little bit of dive actually, like we saw them going into um, like going into their attacking phase, or if they're going to chicken out and they're going to go back to the Lucio Reinhardt, because Lucio has a really big impact on uh, on Flashpoint, especially because he's able to speed your team around, and you need those extra fights because Flashpoint's point capture points tick up 1.5 times faster than the regular ones on Control and Hybrid. So yeah, losing that extra time just walking back from spawn is a really big detriment. Exactly, and obviously, you know, like... The there's only two maps for them to pick from, and I don't think either map favors anything but a rush here. Uh, but I do, I have seen a lot of Doomfist comps being run on here, and we know that Phantoms can run the Doomfist. Not too sure about Luffy, but I can definitely see a dive mirror coming out if Team Owen didn't seem so particular about that rush comp. I don't know what it is, but they just seem to love running that Rhine, and maybe it's a comfort for Luffy. But I know for a fact Phantoms is itching to play some Winston right now. <laughs> yeah, and we're probably going to see them actually brought to Surafasa. The map is, in general, a lot more open and has a lot more diverse playstyles on it, while Route 66 favors more of, you know, your traditional hunker down, rush, brawl, and a little bit of spam. While Surafasa, especially with some of the points, like I think it was uh, Palace, Palace the one with the fountain, a lot more open. Uh, well, massive I... sight lines, lots of little high ground scattered around the place, and you also have gardens as well, which is the same thing with those little half walls, not half walls, but like 75% like height, which Doomfist and Winston can easily make it over, but none of the other cast really can. So that's mm -hmm. like a lot of vertical mobility and a lot of opportunities for them to make it around. But it does look like we're going to go to New Junk City instead. 
Yeah, and Dujunk City, I definitely think uh, the Symmetra is a possibility here. I'm not sure if either team has a player that is partial towards the Symmetra, but I know for a fact over on U of T Varsity, we did love running a lot of the Symmetra TPs on New Junk City to get to the point even quicker. Uh, but I'd like to see what they run out on here on New Junk City. Yeah, especially in first point, there's a lot of different strategies that actually kind of evolved. Because you saw most most teams were rushing with Sim, Lucio, Reinhardt, trying to get to first point through the streets. But then you also saw a different evolution of it, where if you were playing more mobile tanks, you would actually go underneath next to the point, and then you would jump up above when the enemy team would start to take more space. So there are a couple actual different ways of playing it. It's not as they versus some other maps, but we've really seen it come into, into its own. And we might be getting your wish from earlier. <laughs> Phantoms blocking the hog, Caprixel on to the Life Weaver. Not sure if this is exactly what they're going to be playing. <laughs> you know, Ward on the Streets is actually, Phantoms has a massive hog and he's ready to use it. You know, those hooks are going to be insane, especially against Luffy's Doomfist. If he's not prepared for it, uh, he's no. going to get messed up. Junker Queen, and I did mention oh. earlier, Phantoms has a pocket Junker Queen. Uh, Junker Queen, awesome on New Junk City, but so is Doomfist. Lofi going for a bit of a different style here on his team with the Doomfist, Genji, Tracer, Ana, and Brig. The Nanoblade is definitely going to be in play for a lot of these fights. Lofi, though, going to be using both of his cooldowns immediately and getting kicked off. Wow. just walks over the back line. But a, a 360 Axeman catches both of the supports, and that's going to be a quick team fight for Team Cool Cats. Another thing I did want to mention as well, though, is it looks like Team uh, Team Owen is uh, really like they're full committing to what their team is comfortable on. You know, we're seeing the Tracer, we're seeing the the Genji, the the Doomfist, and the Ana. It seems like they're less like not fighting with what they're used to but they're they're trying to default back to their comfort zone and and like hoping that that would you know ease up the tensions a little bit yeah but comfort can only do so much i guess a good team cop and life they just dying like first every other fight uh just using both his cooldowns to go in and out not sure how much experience he does have on the doomfist but if you know anything about high level doomfist play you're in with one ability and out with the other gonna get knifed here though gonna drop low and team cool cat's almost going into the spawn here yeah and it does look like uh first point is gonna be a little bit of a done deal especially no ultimates coming up from either side because like i said before these capture points tick really fast um it does look like it's going to be a reset angle as Ana walks in the axe. Both, both of them on the axe. Phantom's just walking on their back line. That speed boost with the shout is going to commit the ult here, which I'm not sure if it was necessary. Maybe just to stay alive, saving that KD. Someone is on the pad cap and does manage to get it off. Leipe going to be running low here, though, and dying. And Team yep. Cool Cat's going to go back to the point and reclaim it. Yeah, the Junker Queen ult was a little bit selfish as he didn't want to die on top of the enemy team. You know, he didn't really need it, but he wanted to keep the momentum going, and I can respect that as well. Yeah. Luffy was trying to follow up on um, on the back cap, but he wasn't really able to, and that really just sees us going to second, where it looks like it's going to be a little more open. Yeah, but Team Cool Cat's over here having an insane... Well, not an insane ult advantage, a very similar ult bank. But I don't think if you're Phantoms, you're going to be missing your uh, Junker Queen ult here very much. Uh, I'm going to assume it's going to be an engage, maybe either with uh, a Shell Blade. Oh, but the stick! Oh, the shell is going to put the back in! Phantoms is going to walk in here. He's not able to get anything, though. Both teams are even. He did use a shout, however, so there's going to be no sustain on the on the side of the Junker Queen here. Going to be pivoting to the point. A little easier for Sam Rouge to play uh, with these long sight lines. Yep, this is going to be incredibly difficult for Luffy here, as he's still 50% away from his ultimate, but Team Cool Cats has four abilities that are able to completely nullify him or kill him on the spot. Oh, Pixel gonna be getting slept here, but the shout comes out. Pixel hacked, but Nanoblade comes out. That's one for 1987 or 84. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but not gonna get 87. <laughs> not gonna be getting any more with the blade. Pixel gonna be taking out the Sombra, and the supports on the side of Cool Cats are still alive. 
Maybe they go for a touch here? Yeah, they're gonna look for a cheeky little brawl, especially Kiriko. He's really, really, really big on the side angles and the flanks, but it does look like she's, she's gonna blow the TP early and blow the Suzu as well, running straight into the Briggs arms. And oh, that, but that's big happened. percentage there. That's big percentage there for the side of Team Cool Cats. They did deny the cap, which means that all they need to do is wait for Caprixel to come back. And and they, honestly, they can just engage here with Sam Rouge's ult or Caprixel's ult. Yeah, it's gonna be a real toss-up on how they decide to engage on this fight as, you know, Locke is almost on his just, just getting a pick. We've been seeing him do this all series. Getting picks left and right. Can I pop the ult? The beautiful shot! Is he gonna get a third? Oh, it doesn't look like it. It looks like the cleanup's just gonna be coming into form in the spirit. <laughs> in spirit. But is that last fight maybe for the second point here of New Chunk City? Yeah, but that's definitely last point for uh, last fight for second point, and they might even be able to catch the Brigitte off guard here. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they and they will. Right back to the spawn room. Yeah, and now swapping over to the Sombra Kishi um, from. Uh, sorry, they were on Tracer before, I believe. Uh, but what is that really gonna do here? Yeah, I mean, it seems more like they want to try and farm up a quick EMP and shut down those abilities, right? Because they do know that they're still holding on to Kitsune Rush and they're still holding on to Beat. Uh, maybe trying to counteract those abilities as well is, in their mind, gonna relieve some of their pain points and yeah. give them a little bit of an advantage here. But Phantoms is going to be having a free ult here, considering the fact that there's nothing to cleanse his um, his ult here. Coming in with the Joker Queen, going to be shouting, goes for the axe. They don't even need to do anything. Phantoms and Sam Roosh just clean up house. Yeah, holy MTD indeed. As as Phantoms and Sam Roosh, they they have that ability where they just they just walk in. You know, Sam Roosh always he can very very consistently finds the opening picks. You know, he charges up the railgun, he finds a dink, and then Phantoms is able to, like, recognize that immediately, he shouts in and then he just goes. And that ability to just activate as soon as you see an opportunity, that's really highly valued, especially yeah. from your dealer. They've been holding on to this Kitsune Rush a lot here, and here it comes right away. I'm expecting an EMP from Kishi in 3, 2, 1 maybe, but no! The blade's gonna come out from Selico and it's gonna clean up, he doesn't even get a chance to build the EMP! Selico with 4. Yeah, so a minor overall there, but you know, if anything to secure the point as they have two ults ready. They have Junker Queen and Beat, and they also have an overclock coming in. If we know Samurouge, we know that overclock is probably just gonna end up this game entirely. But I think what I'd like to see myself is an early ult from Phantoms here to deny them deny, deny them that space while they do have the rally that could help them sustain. If the focus fire is good enough, that anti will be big, but the EMP is gonna be coming out with the blade from Kishi in 1984. But nothing is found. The B is immaculate from Drac. The Joker Queen all comes out from Phantoms. And the cleanup, it's all there. Can anybody salvage this for Team 0 and 6? The, the rally does come out. Sam Rouge builds his overclock in. Drac gets picked up. Sam Rouge gets, gets walked over. But Team Cool okay. Cats. They, they weren't able to finish their cleanup here. They're, they're struggling. Compressional dropping low is going to burn the TP here. Oh, very, very low. It's a slow fight on the point. Lefei, though, getting the pick on the Compressional and Celico. We were talking about a tank diff. We were talking about a tank diff. Lefei. And this is the comeback arc. This is where they come back. This is where Team Owen gets their one. <laughs> But let's not I, I believe I'm I'm a, I'm a stark believer in Team Owen right here. Yeah, well, Team Owen does indeed have the ult advantage as well with the Kitsune and the Junker Queen already. Lefe, you built that Junker Queen ult so quickly, like that was instantaneous. It felt like what a fight and a half. Yeah, he got that incredibly quickly, and you know it was. <laughs> and here you are, you're about to see it pay off here. As he's getting ready, he's coming around the corner. He's trying to bait out the Suzu, but it doesn't look like it's going to come out too early. Kitsune does come out here uh, for the side of Owen Four, but there's the Junker Queen all hidden four on the side of Team Cool Cats, and they just all burn to death. And that's another fight win for Team Owen Six, possibly even the point. Phantoms using his ult that fight and not getting anything with it.
Yep, so Drac might attempt to touch here, but it does look like it's going to be secured for Team O and 6 as they head over to the indoor points. Now, those points are a lot more clustered, a lot more uh, fight-centric, and, you know, looking at the play, looking at the Katsune Rush, unless they're able to get massive ults out from Team Cool Cats, Team uh, Owen is going to be fighting an uphill battle here. Yeah, well, it does look like because of the ult advantage, I imagine that Team Cool Cats takes this first fight initially, but now that they've pivoted over to this Queen and Kiriko on the side of Team Owen 6, it's very possible that they could reverse sweep this map. Yeah, exactly. You can see Ninjak rushing towards his rally. Oh, but Kishi gets a hack off the blade comes out, but the rally does too. And what does this blade really do for them? Guns takes out Drac. Kishi does get the pick, and Lepe very low. Caprizo gets picked. So does Phantoms, but it's just not enough. The blade, the, the blade of 19, the blade of 87. <laughs> The blade of 87, it comes out, and it just does way more than Celico's. Yep, 1984 and Ninjak, both of them fighting to keep this point alive. They really, really tried hard. And even though Caprixel didn't pop up the Katsune Rush, it was still such a close fight. Oh, we are coming up on another fight where the EMP is going to be coming online for Kishi, maybe mid-fight, but only 5% left. I'd like to see them set up for a fast fight with the EMP if possible, but it looks like the Kitsune is going to be coming out already from Caprixel, and Ninjak is gone instantly, but Caprixel traded immediately as well. You have to wonder what happened. Kishi going to be dropping low, does TP out, gets chased a little bit by Phantoms, but the target turns to Life and he dies. Yep, no healing, no strong healing on the team on the side of Cool Cats, but it looks like it just does not matter as they're able to clean up the house, clean up house. But they staggered on the on the cap. It's sixty nine percent for Team Owen. Nice. Just one cap, your one fight win for Team Owen looks like it will be enough. To yeah, it's very possible to tie it up here for Team Owen and. You have to wonder what's going through Team Cool Cat's heads right now. What is what is this roadblock stopping them from taking the rest of this map? Yeah, and here we're looking at it. Guns is going to try and rapidly build his ult. He's at 87%, 89% on the Caracols. And the EMP as well. Looks like a great avenue to build it as well. As so they're looking for an off angle engage. Here comes the EMP from Kishi, but Guns does take it out early by Phantoms. The beat comes out from Drac, does not get hit by the EMP. And Lefe going to drop soon after. It's looking like a fight win for Team Cool Cats. Kishi going to be low on the side here. Celico taking him out. Or actually, sorry, Caprixel getting the last shit. Yep, Drax B was an absolute lifesaver there. So he was able to nullify the, the the EMP and save a lot of low HP members. That was a four-man EMP, but it unfortunately didn't catch track, which is how he was able to get the beat off so fast. Yeah, Leve going to be on the point touching, but Guns uses both of his cooldowns and instantly dies. Does get to pop the uh, Kitsune Rush early, but the C9! <laughs> No one touches! And we have a little bit of a Charlie Niner here as Team Owen drops the points and isn't able to, <laughs> to come back with the touch. And it's Team Cool Cat securing the 3-0 victory. Very, very close. Amazing plays on the side of Team Cool Cats. Some, some signs of life on the side of Team Owen 6. I don't think they should be so down on themselves as they are. But definitely, definitely a very, very one-sided game. For Team Cool Cats. Yep, definitely going to be a little bit of MTD discussion after this game, especially as uh, I have a feeling of one or the other is going to get a little bit of punching at their desk after this. <laughs> just a little bit, just a little no, bit. Just of, a little, uh, lovingly, lovingly, of course. Loving, so loving hard. fighting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am pretty sure Celica was playing that match on 200 ping as well. Just for your information. Well, I mean, he still played that very, very well, especially at the 200 yeah. ping. Uh, that was a valiant performance, I will say. Yeah, for sure. A wonderful game on the side of Team Cool Cats. Very fun one to cast. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for coming by and watching. And uh, I believe we have another intramurals match getting streamed next week. Could be our match. You could see us playing. I'm not sure. Cannot deny or confirm. But uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. This has been Hypothesis and Spaffles. And have a wonderful Sunday night. Have a good night, everybody. Goodbye.